Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Today at CES 2020, Corsair announced their brand new flagship air cooler, the Corsair A500. And I'm really sorry if you're watching this in the future. <laughs> this stuff gets outdated really quickly. And Corsair sent us one of these A500s, but we had to keep it under wraps until now. So yeah, we decided that instead of just releasing a review like we usually do with these new coolers that instead we'd create a definitive installation guide showing you how to install it on AMD's AIM4 based desktop platform. You guys have been asking us to cover more air cooling solutions so I thought that I'd take this opportunity to show you how to install this awesome new cooler from Corsair. So yeah, let's do it. Before we begin, I just want to make this super clear. This is for demonstration purposes only. This particular installation guide is for AMD's AM4 based desktop systems only. Every system, every motherboard and every setup is different. This guide is just to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Corsair A500. There's also an Intel version of this video as well and you can check that out up there. And make sure you watch the entire video before asking questions because chances are I'm going to answer the inevitable questions in this video anyway. So so let's <laughs> answer some of those questions right off the bat. Yes, I do recommend removing your motherboard from your system to install this cooler if it's already in a system. Trust me, it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. No, it's not RGB. Yes, you can install RGB fans on it if you really want to. No, this cooler will not detect in Corsair IQ. Yes, everything you're seeing in this video for installation is included with the box with this cooler. Yes, it will work with almost every single Intel CPU and motherboard combo you're going to ask about from about 2008 up until the foreseeable future. Yes, it will work with whatever AMD AM4 socket CPU and motherboard combo you have. No, this cooler is not compatible with AMD's Threadripper platform. Now that's out of the way, let's start off by seeing what's in the box. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's check out what's in the box with Corsair's new flagship air cooler, the Corsair A500. Let's check out what's in the box. Okay, we've got this box full of accessories. This has basically got everything you need to install this on almost every single platform, and I say almost every platform, and also this guide on how to install everything that we're gonna throw away, because we're not gonna use it, because that's what this video is for. All right, let's uh, get it out of the box so we can take a little bit of a close look at the cooler itself, spin it around, take out that nicely branded Corsair screwdriver that comes with it. And yes, you do need a very long screwdriver to install this cooler as I'm about to show you, but let's get the cooler out and take a little bit of a closer look at the things that make this unique. Now, you'll notice that this cooler actually has pre-applied thermal paste on the cold plate. Usually these big air coolers don't have pre-applied thermal paste. However, it does come with additional thermal paste in case you're installing this cooler more than once. Now let's take a look at all of the accessories and everything you're going to need to install this on your motherboard. First up is all of the AMD mounting hardware. Now this is for AM4, AM3, FM2 and everything except TR4. Unfortunately, it does not work with TR4. There's also Intel mounting hardware. Now this is both for Intel's HEDT platforms and their desktop platform. So it does have a backplate for the 11.5X stuff and also the stuff for the 20XX sockets, which we will be covering in these installation guides. There's also a PWM fan splitter because this is a dual fan cooler. You do actually need to power two fans. So yeah, this is a nice addition. As well as that, there is some XTM50 thermal compound from Corsair as well. Now, like I mentioned, they add this in case you want to install this cooler more than once. So let's say you're upgrading in the future and you want to keep the cooler this is nice to have and last but not least are three zip ties now they have this included for cable management which we're not going to be covering in this video at all now the first step to all of these installations is removing the top plate now you can do this with two fingers or you can use two hands or you can grab it from the top or bottom but you do need to remove this before you start installing and as you'll notice here there's four pegs that actually mount it to these four mounting holes on the top but yeah you will need to remove it because there is two 
retention screws. They're spring-loaded retention screws that screw into the retention system. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at these two screws, and it is required that you take it off to actually fasten these with the long screwdriver. So yeah, let's get into the installation. Okay, let's kick this off with the AM4 installation guide. This is a very easy and straightforward installation guide, so follow along and I'll try to make this as painless as possible. So I'm just showing a few of the things you're going to need for this installation guide. Uh, these are specific to the AM4 and AM3 installation, which is quite similar. But yeah, I'm not going to go into this. This is all about AM4. So let's line those parts up again so you can have a look. There's some screws. There's the actual retention brackets. There's some plastic spaces. And that's basically it. It's very straightforward. You need to actually go ahead and remove the stock AM4 retention system that comes on every AM4 motherboard. It's very straightforward. It's just four screws. And we're going to be using the stock backplate that comes with your motherboard for this cooler. And make sure you save these plastic brackets because I have a lot of people on our Discord who complain about losing them. Keep them safe just in case you need to use them later down the line. Trust me. Yeah, if you're upgrading later to a cooler that needs it, you want to keep these in your arsenal. Okay, locate these four plastic spaces. And what we're going to do with these is very gently place them on top of the four holes that you just pulled the retention brackets from. Locate two of these AM4 mounting brackets. And what you want to do is lower these onto the top of the plastic spaces that I just showed. And you want to have it aligned this way with it arcing down towards the CPU. Otherwise, it will not install. And the bottom bracket is much the same. It needs to arc towards the CPU. Otherwise, it will not line up and you won't be able to install it properly. Locate the four mounting screws. And the, the best tip I can give you for this is just finger tighten them in just as loose as possible. Do every single corner up just so they, they're in there and grab that included screwdriver and tighten it all up. Now I usually do it from opposing corners like in a diagonal pattern just so the tension's right. I mean it doesn't really matter with these coolers but yeah this is just an old habit and old habits die hard. Once everything's signed up, you need to align the fan this side towards the RAM that I'm indicating and lower it straight onto the IHS of your CPU. And make sure it lines up with the screws on the bottom of the cooler. Obviously, it's, it's quite hard to film them lining up. But yeah, you can actually look underneath the cooler to see if they line up and get that Corsair screwdriver and gently mount them. Don't fully tighten them up. Just make sure they're grabbing thread and tighten them up. And yeah, just rinse and repeat that process until the cooler is tightened all the way up. And this is why you need to remove that top plate. And once you're done, put the top plate back on because you're done with this part of the install. Next up, you need to locate the two-way PWM splitter, locate a CPU fan header on your motherboard, plug the end, the only end rather, that fits in to the PWM fan header, get the other sides that split off and plug the two fans into that splitter. Pretty straightforward. This is one of the easiest insulation guides and that's it. You're done. Pretty straightforward. Now I can already anticipate the questions we're going to get about RAM clearance because this is a common issue with these huge air coolers. You can actually adjust the fans on this by sliding them up. They have little clicking notches that allow you to align it anywhere and allows you to do it on either side. So you shouldn't actually have any RAM clearance issues. And I think this is a wonderful system for addressing that huge problem that a lot of air coolers have. And if you had any luck, it should have turned out a little something like this. everything in this video and if you've got any questions feel free to head on over to our discord or drop a comment down below but 
make sure you read the comment section first because myself or someone probably would have already answered your question. And yeah, take that into consideration before asking anything. And I'm not doing it to sound rude. I just don't want you to waste your time. And yeah, let us know if this video also helped you with your insulation. If you like this video, please like and subscribe or hit the join button to support the channel. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and yeah. Obviously, we're not at CES 2020, but we've got all the goodies here already, so we didn't have to leave the house. Thanks for watching.